My interest in the field of astrobiology started when I was a teenager. I remember being in high school and seeing the TV series Cosmos from Carl Sagan. And I have to tell you, he was definitely my inspiration to start in this, this field. But I was always interested in connecting chemistry uh, to space. And so that's why I decided to do a PhD in astrobiology and start in this field. Different meteorites represent different pieces of a big puzzle that we're trying to answer. In my particular case, I'm particularly interested in this type of, of meteorites. They're called carbonaceous chondrites. And they give us clues about the building blocks of life that were brought to the Earth about 4.6 to 3.8 billion years ago. I always think them as time travel machines. And this is actually the type of meteorite I analyze in the lab in order to, to find organic molecules, the building blocks of life. So a meteorite is a space rock. It came from out of the Earth. And basically, it survived the entry and impact in the surface of the Earth. When a meteorite enters the atmosphere, it forms a, a fusion crust. So basically, the outside of the meteorite is going to be completely burnt. Although the outside is very, very hot and any organic compounds uh, that are present are burnt, the inside is OK and it's fine and we can actually analyze it. Recently, we had a meteorite that fell in Russia. Lots of people got injured because of, of the impact and the explosion in the atmosphere. It was a meteorite and not a meteor like previously thought because a few pieces were found on the ice and then scientists could actually analyze it. Life as we know it here on Earth uh, needs a certain amount of uh, organic compounds and specific organic compounds. So for example, uh, the cell, the basic unit of life, uh, is composed of amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. So basically when I analyze a meteorite, I'm looking for amino acids and try to see if they're present. The important thing is to see that actually the amino acids that are present in the meteorite are extraterrestrial, so they were formed outside of the Earth and not simple terrestrial contamination. The origin of life on Earth is a special thing, but we know that the building blocks of life were brought to the Earth. So what that tells us is that the building blocks of life are widespread throughout our solar system. So if life originated here on Earth, why not in other places in our solar system? So that's the second question I'm actually interested in. I try to develop methods of detection uh, when we have a space mission. So imagine we go to Mars, uh, how do we detect life in there? And also, how are the building blocks of life surviving in the outer space? So that's why I'm also involved in the few missions that are going to the International Space Station. When I, I analyze a meteorite, I never know which organic molecule I'm going to detect there. So sometimes I detect a certain molecule and based on my results, then I think, oh, maybe I can find this other molecule that's also extremely important for the origin of life on Earth. But usually this type of research takes years, on average four to five years. I would never be able to actually do this, this type of research if I did not have a, a Royal Society University Research Fellowship. I love my job because basically I'm, I'm answering one of the fundamental questions uh, in humankind. And uh, being in URF actually allows me to do that.